Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of Llamas Love Lettering. Today, instead of going over a lettering style, I'm going to build on the doodling um, periscope that I did about a week ago to show you how to do a fall card. And I wrote on mine, it's fall y'all, since that seems to be a popular phrase right now. But um, you don't have to, you can put a name on it, you can put whatever you want. But I'm going to show you how to do a card like this with pumpkins and shit on it, okay? So this is gonna be about the final product. Okay, so what you need, what I'm using at least, is um, we'll start with, we need, this is Bristol. I'll show you here, Bristol. And the reason I'm using this is because with the Tombow markers, this is such a smooth surface that they really blend nicely. But you can use any paper you want. Plus this doesn't, like you can see on the back of this, Bristol's so thick it doesn't bleed. Anyway, so we're using Bristol, and then I'm going to use a paper cutter like this to cut the Bristol and to score it, and then I'm going to use a bone folder to make the, the crease nice and tight. I said crease, but um, again, all of these are optional. You can make do with scissors and a ruler, your call man, um, and then... I have gathered up some Tombow markers, which is what I'm, I'm using. Oh, sorry, a pencil and an eraser, which I've just, I haven't this eraser, just a good old white rubber eraser. And then I gathered up some Tombow markers. So for this, for this particular drawing, what I am using, oh, okay, sorry. I have a Faber-Castell pit pen in the fine tip, and I'm gonna use this for the lettering and the inking. I like this because it is water fast, and so it generally, because I'm going to be working so fast, you'll probably see some, some bleeding into the Tombows, but whatever, it's a handmade card. But if you let it dry, it doesn't do that. So I'm going to use that for the inking. And then for the coloring, I have put together um, a couple of sets. So I've grabbed some markers that are in the same color family to do. I'm doing two colors per pumpkin. So I'm going to do one set of colors per pumpkin and then a slightly darker set of colors for the other pumpkin because I want the one behind it to be a bit, little bit darker for contrast. I've got some browns for the stems and for the some of the leaves. I've got some greens for the grass. And then I got a, a light blue, a light blue, a light blue for the accenting. Okay, so these are the colors that I'm picking. And again, you don't have to, but because part of what I'm gonna do for the shading is just do a little bit of blending, it'll be nice to have two colors to blend together. Okay, so put those to the side. Okay, so for making my card, I want about this wide of paper. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just estimate estimate how much card I want about that much maybe yeah that'll work okay so I'll cut the card paper and then what I usually do to figure out the middle is I will and it is if you are more experienced card makers than I, I'm sure you have your own tips I just sort of fold it in the middle here a little bit and then put that fold that fold on the edge of my cutter. I'm sorry, you can't see very well because of my desk and the camera angle, but I'm gonna use the score to score this so that I have the line scored, which then makes it pretty easy to fold it. I'm done with this, and I'm done with this scrap. I'll save that for later. Okay, so now I have my folded card, and I'm just gonna take the bone folder, and I'm gonna kind of now, one of the things I'm going to mention right off the bat is that it is really easy, especially if you have sweaty hands like I do, to leave like prints, fingerprints all over it or marks. It's a handmade thing, so in my mind it doesn't really matter because it is hand-drawn. It should look hand-drawn, but if it bothers you, you just have to be really careful or wait in between layers to let things dry. Okay, so I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to sketch in the pumpkins. I'm going to sketch in the whole thing, okay? So if you saw my my basic pumpkin doodles, what I'm going to do is like a tall pumpkin. So I'll start with that like C shape and then I'll do a C shape on the opposite side and then do the middle. 
kind of kind of do a a stem there the bottom add the back part maybe add a little definition so there's the first pumpkin and then for this pumpkin I'm gonna do a little smaller and fatter so I'll make the C's a little deeper and then add this one in add the definition do another stem and then add the back okay and if you need like a better I don't know if you can see any of these pencil marks that I'm making with the with the lighting the way it is but hopefully you can so here I'll hold it up so if you can see those pencil marks that I made for the pumpkins and then for the grass I'm just doing like a little suggestion of grass and I'm having it like trail down out of the frame and then I'm gonna add a leaf down here again just leaves pulled from my doodling then I'll maybe add a, a little vine because people love vines off of each of my pumpkins maybe add a little leaf off of one of my pumpkins and then I'm gonna do some like wind lines and let's do a good wind line all you really have to do is a line with a curve and then a line with a curve going in the other direction and then maybe one in the middle so if you can see those those lines right there hope you can those are basic wind lines and then draw like a leaf kind of coming out of the wind maybe do another leaf kind of making them look helter skelter like it's a you know one of those days where the wind is like just kind of blowing you every which way okay so I've got some leaves sketched in okay once everything is sketched in I want you to take a minute with your pen and outline. Now you'll notice with the pumpkins that they overlap each other. I did that on purpose because I want to have this smaller fat pumpkin in the foreground. So I usually, you could go through and erase all the lines that you don't need, but I've done this often enough where I don't bother and honestly, if you know what you're trying to draw, just don't ink over the lines that are obviously more of your guidelines. Add a little definition and then we'll ink in the other pumpkin Okay, so you have two pumpkins inked in. And then, sorry, I'm still sick. <clears throat> and then I go, I will add those vines. Again with the vine, just a curly line. Is all you really need. Oops, I forgot this part. Okay. Okay, so the pumpkins are inked in. Now I'm going to add the grass, and like I said, I just add like a little suggestion of grass to make it, and have it go off the side. There's the leaf. And if you notice, I'm not totally on my guidelines because that's just how I draw. But don't feel bad if you stay exactly on your guidelines, that's what they're there for. I just usually don't like using guidelines that often which means I screw up a lot <laughs> okay so everything's inked in and we're gonna do the lettering after because then you can leave it blank and you can decide what you want so I'm gonna kind of try and keep it from getting all you know so then just lightly take your eraser you don't want to go too heavy handed because you might smear the marker. But just go quickly erase whatever guidelines are still showing. Okay. Let me go get rid of my, my little shavings. 
<sighs> okay. And there you go. You see, you can already see I'm leaving fingerprints everywhere. Whatever. Okay. So there's your inked in drawing. Okay. See. Okay, you can see everything. I'm just double checking with my camera. Okay, so we will start. Actually, you know, one of the things I did learn from doing this is that maybe we should do the lettering. Now, this is your call. You can do it after. I On this one, I did the lettering after I colored. But honestly, I left fingerprints all over this. So it might be better to get all the black and white done before you uh, go in with the color to save yourself the fingerprints. So I'm going to write it's fall, y'all, again. And I'm doing it just in my Thickened with the Downstroke Folligraphy that you can learn about in lesson, I think, two or three of Llama's Love Lettering. But you can do any style you want. You can do any kind of lettering you want, and it can say whatever you want because it's your card. But I'm going to do It's Fall Y'all again because why not? So there's my word. And then when I thicken the downstroke, especially on something like this, I like to go completely back over it. Because that some people have asked me how to keep it from looking choppy. That's how you keep it from looking choppy. You just go straight from back over it again, just thickening as you go. Okay. Well, a little flourish. And I still haven't figured out the most, the best looking way to add the flourish. So I just do whatever I want. I'm not being graded. Oops, forgot this part. I've been doing that a lot lately. Okay. So you're adding in your thickening for the downstroke. Just coloring in the parts that you just thickened. And you could use a fatter marker for this, but I'm not right now. So there's the it's. And then Like I said with the thickening, start from the beginning, go around, and then just bring it out for all of your downstrokes. Make this a little flourish. That way it looks like smooth and not like a big chunk. It's fall. You know what? For the sake of time, I'm going to grab this pit brush pen to fill this in because, which could be a risky proposition. Generally speaking, I'm way too heavy handed to fill in this way, but for the sake of time, I am risking everything for you. It's just, I could have just written this with the brush pen, but honestly, I don't, I'm still unsure about how my brush lettering looks. So I feel much more comfortable doing this like more controlled photography where you control each downstroke very specifically with your, whoops, okay, well, whatever, close enough. You control each downstroke very specifically with your, with your regular pointed pen. So I'm not really prepared So as you can see, I'm just adding in. I'm not going to go back and clean that up a little bit because I'm still not used to. It just seems so like nerve wracking to me to do this with a brush pen. It's, I'm really heavy handed, so it's very easy for me to, to goof, you know? When you have a lighter hand, like I've said before with the thickening and with other things where building, if you build up, um, 
It's so much easier than if you start big because it's harder to take away than it is to add. And when you have a heavy hand, adding is pretty much um, all you do. So, okay, so the black and white is done. You have your finished drawing. So we take it from this to this. We need to start paint, uh, painting. We need to start um, using markers. So I'm going to start with this front pumpkin. And I'm going to use these two. If you're using Tombows, I'm using 925 and 933 as my as my um, as my base colors. Okay, so I'm going to take the lighter color and I'm going to do a quick and dirty just fill in. Now one of the things you'll notice if you use Bristol is that it's very smooth. So the the um, Tombow just almost sits on top of it like paint. It takes a little bit for it to dry. Okay, so I did a quick and dirty color in. I'm going to take this slightly darker shade and I'm going to kind of go around all of the edges. I'm not doing like realistic shadowing with this. It's going to be a little bit more stylized than that because it's just not really my... That's not the look I'm going for. I'm not looking for a realistic shadow. I'm just looking for something like cool looking and pretty. So I'm going around all of the, the edges with my darker color. Then I'm going to take my lighter color, and this is where the magic of the Bristol comes in. I'm going to start blending in the darker color. You can see how it's the lighter color is kind of pulling it down, pulling it out. I'm just going to kind of blend, use my lighter color to kind of pull the the darker color so it doesn't look like a line, that it looks like a okay. So there's a nice kind of just gives it a little bit of depth. It's not totally it's not totally painted in but or colored perfectly, but it's got some depth to it. And then I might go back in I might go back in with the darker shade just to give a little bit more definition in spots that feel like I, I want it. And you can see that the black marker is sort of coming off too at this point. And that's fine. I'm just kind of squiggling in some like a little bit darker to the edges. And then one more time with the light, just kind of soften the edge of where I was just coloring, kind of. There we go. So there's a nice pumpkin, right? And all you're doing is basically moving the color around on the Bristol surface. Now I'm just going to take a second and color in one of the leaves with my darker color. I'm not going to get too detailed. I'm just going to color them. When you have the black marker blending in with it, it kind of makes it look more fall-like. So, okay. So there's one leaf and there's one pumpkin. Now for the other pumpkin, I'm going to take my slightly darker set, and once again, I'm going to take the lighter color, and I'm going to go quick and dirty. It's one of the things with the, the brush pens. Just kind of add a quick, like, wash of color. It's one of the things I love about these Tombow markers is they're really wide, super flexible brush nib. Okay, then I'm going to take my darker color. I'm going to do the same thing that I just did. I'm going to go over all of the... All of the... Um, and that includes this edge here with um, where the, the edge where the other pumpkin hits. And then once again, I'm going to take where I take the dark marker that I just laid down and I'm going to kind of blend it out. And the, see, to me, I don't care if I'm a little sloppy. If you don't want to be so sloppy, you can go slower. I don't mind the sloppiness, I think. And I'm going to take this orange and add maybe another... 
another kind of leaf. Okay. I like the sloppiness. I think it adds like a more charm to it, but regardless, you do it how you want to. Okay, so I'm going to take my lighter brown and I'm going to drop some color into the stems and while I'm at it I will add a brown leaf and I'm going to take my slightly darker redder brown and add some just some color to the stems and maybe to another leaf it's like that red color, which really makes me think of fall. Okay, so there's that. And then I'm going to just go back with the brown once again and kind of blend in the brown. Okay, so we have our stems done. And then it's time for the grass. So take your lighter green. And what I do is I usually go up to the very top of where the grass is and then I bring it down, but not all the way. I, don't, I like the look of having some white space on the bottom, so I will bring it down, but not all the way. I'll go up to the top and then bring it down, following the edge of my pumpkins and my grass line and the edge of the leaf right here. Just leaving handprints everywhere. Oh my God. It's hot. I'm super sweaty. So, okay. And then I will bring it down when I get to the edge, actually. Okay. So there's the initial color for the, um, for the grass. And then here's a slightly darker shade of green. And I'm going to go up to the top of the grass tips and all the way around the bottoms of the pumpkins, back up to the top of the grass. Maybe bring a little bit further and then I'm going to go under the, the leaf. Okay. Now I'm going to take this light green and once again, blend it. Okay. I'm going to, sorry, my camera cut out. I'm going to keep blending the green downwards. See, sometimes the paper will pull up a little bit and that's when I just take I'm going to blend this green a little bit more. If the paper pills a little bit, I just usually take a paper towel and kind of dust it off. Okay. And then I'm going to add that, that darker green as one of the leaves because add some variety to the leaf shades. Okay. So now you have most of the coloring done. And then to finish it off, one of the things I do is I like to add some blue. Like this is a light blue, but it helps like give the illusion of sky. So all of your leaves in the sky, I just do a quick like messy outline with the blue edge of the brush tip. And then sometimes I'll have to run the brush over as it starts to pick up some of the color. Add some blue. I do it with the vines as well. If you pick up any extra color with your Tombow, you just have to run it on some paper until the color comes off. Add some blue over the grass down to the bottom. And then I do a quick amount of blue. It's like a drop shadow kind of along the to the right like edge of the letters to tie it all in and there you go you have your nice it's fall y'all card and it's ready for you to open up and write to somebody but so anyway i'd love to see your work so let me know show me on instagram at, at llama letters anyway um have a lovely afternoon